Let's talk about the killing of Deborah Yakubu, the Sokoto student who was lynched after being accused of blasphemy. There are now new details as to what really happened that day. A particular eyewitness has reached out to me explaining how it all began, when the fight started, and how they tried to help her escape. These particular details was given to me by a hostel mate who met Deborah, who even tried to help Deborah in the process before everything just escalated. And the details are really, really shocking. And to me, it looked like something that could have been avoided. But then, you know, I guess sometimes what wants to happen usually just happens. Now, before I continue, I had previously made a video regarding this story and I had shared it on my Facebook, on TikTok and uh, Instagram. I also posted it on YouTube, but YouTube took it down. They weren't comfortable with the fact that there were clips of the incident shown in the video and that was why they took it down. So, in this particular video, we will be avoiding some of the graphic images and uh, just get on with the story. And thankfully, we have new details that would most likely make the previous video make a lot of sense. So, even if you have seen the other video, it's important you listen to this one because there are now new details that would make the story more understandable. So this happened on the 12th of May 2022. Earlier that day around 12 in the midnight or early hours around those you know five six thereabout it was said Deborah was uh, woke up to a whatsapp message in their whatsapp group. Now Remember the voice note she was saying, God forbid, nothing would happen to us. A lot of us have been focusing on what she said, but not many people have talked about what led to her to say that kind of a thing. Because it was discovered that the group has actually been sharing uh, religious stuff long before that day. It wasn't as if it was that day that our cosmates started sharing religious things. So it happened that the group has been sharing a lot of Islamic messages, Islamic prayers, a group that was supposed to be for education, a group that was supposed to be for past questions, a group that was supposed to be for updates as to lectures and um, assignments suddenly turned into a group of Islamic students sharing their religious stuff there. And in as much as that is understandable, because I feel like maybe majority of them are Islams and they can relate to it. And I guess maybe that was why for the longest of time, Deborah did not have a problem with it until that day when a particular message was sent. And although it's not really important now seeing the circumstances or seeing how it ended, but it's important we know what may have led to Deborah responding that way. Because a lot of people have been asking, why did she say what she said? What was said to her? So according to what we know, or according to what was said, it was believed that one of the students made a repentance post or some sort of jihadi post. It's not clear, but it was almost as if the message that Deborah was responding to kind of religiously put fear in them and told them about turning into Islam, converting into Islam, or something, something would happen to them. And I don't want to use some words that I'm not very sure of or the terminologies, but the gist was that the message or the message that was posted in the group before Deborah I responded had to do with them changing or coming into Islam or something would happen to them and Deborah responded with God forbid nothing would happen to us and immediately she started going on a rant. I guess a hunger got the best of her because she didn't stop. She started reminding them what the group was for, telling them that this is for assignment, this is for past questions, not all these rubbish things that you people are doing here and that was it. Eventually she somehow inserted the Prophet Muhammad in her rant and that upset a lot of the Muslims students and yes we also need to understand that muslims the islam uh religion they don't joke with muhammad they don't joke with their religion they don't play with it you can say anything you want to say about them but once you bring muhammad into it it's a sin the, the penalty is actually death but the only thing is it has to actually go through a legal process as a country that is guarded by laws and constitution the constitution suggests that if someone makes such a thing they should be taken to court and a panel of judges would have to judge her so yes a lot of the islam students talking about how the penalty is dead are correct but it is not supposed to be the way she was killed she was not supposed to be lynched she was not supposed to be laws were not supposed to be taken into the students hands and i think that is where a lot of the confusion is coming about i understand this is a very sensitive topic among the community of christians and muslims but there is a thin line yes the Barah shouldn't have said those things about the prophet muhammad she should have been a little more respectful but you know at the same time the angry mob should not have taken laws into their own hands because I'm sure that there is a law against killing too. 
Deborah was actually in the process of being taken to the police station, according to what I learned. She was in the process of being taken to the police station when these things escalated. Now, when she made the voice note, if you listen to the voice note, you could hear a roommate of hers, like someone who is a roommate, saying that she shouldn't have said that. They were all agreeing with her, cautioning the, the student about making the group about religious posts. But she now extremely went forward and started bringing the Prophet Muhammad in it. And you could hear someone in the voice note tell her, wow, you shouldn't have said that. And for some reason, she didn't even delete the voice note. She continued sending it. She did not take it back. She just let the voice note sit. So this was very early in the morning, five, six, and before they know it, uh, because this particular student who gave me the information is in another hostel. She claimed that she and her other mates in her hostel started hearing noise coming from the NCE block, which was the block that Deborah was at. They were hearing noise, they were hearing fights, and when they went there, they saw that Deborah was being beaten by her fellow girls, and the girls were already beating her, so they took Deborah out of the hostel and brought her to their hostel, and they asked Deborah what she did, and Deborah did not say what she did. She was just sobbing and crying and acting, you know, sort of tough. They said she wasn't exactly remorseful, although eventually the student in the new hostel would ask the student from the other hostel what Deborah did and they showed them Deborah's phone and she told them what Deborah said about the Prophet Muhammad. And they, although when they picked her phone, they did not see the voice note. They claimed Deborah had deleted it, but you know, the voice note was already out. I guess some people already had a copy of it because they started sharing it immediately. So this particular student claimed she told Deborah to revoke her words and apologize. And she claimed Deborah said she would not have already beaten her, that she even tried to apologize, but they did not give her a chance. And so it was like, you know, Deborah felt that there was no need to apologize again after they were beating her. Little did she know that this thing was going to escalate. Now, the students in this new hostel, they knew what was going to happen. They knew the implication. They knew other people were already getting the voice note. So this was around 7, 8 in the morning now. It was daybreak. So they immediately reported to the school authorities. And the school authorities requested that she was taken to the security post of the school. And the security men should hide her. At the same time, the boys in her department already got the word. The boys in the school, even more thugs and street people, had heard that somebody had blasphemed. And they all came trooping down the school. The Shewu Shagari College of Education. So this was the school that they all trooped down looking for Deborah. They went to the girls' hostel and they told them Deborah is no longer in the hostel that she had been reported to the security. They went to the security and the security said Deborah had been taken to the police station. But at the time, Deborah was still hiding in an office in the security post. So it was said the angry mob went to the police station only to go there. They even burned some vehicles, destroyed some properties in the police station and the police were like, what are you people looking for? They were like, they're looking for Deborah that she should come out. So then the police told them that there is not Deborah in this police station. Which Deborah are you people looking for? The boys now went back to the school and realizing that the school had played them. I would guess that the school should have used the opportunity to take Deborah out but I still think there were other students in the school protesting and destroying property so the, the coast wasn't even clear for Deborah to escape. Even as much as some of the mobs went to the police station there were still some angry mobs and youths in the school. So at this point more of the crowd came back to the school. They now learned that Deborah was inside an office in the security post of the school. Someone had tipped them off and that was when they started throwing stones at the security officers. They were fighting, throwing sticks and basically attacking some of the security personnel. Even some of the girls who were trying to help Deborah. There were some Muslim girls, there were some Is um, Islamic students who were like trying to be forgiving. They tried to help Deborah. They even beat up two, about three of the girls and eventually Deborah was left to her fate. It was said it was at this point that the got a hold of her and basically just lynched her when she had passed. You know how they do these things because I've noticed that a lot of this extremist uh, behavior, a lot of this uh, when they are uh, lynching done by extremists after they had finished killing their victims they don't like the body to be fresh we've talked about this with Bridget Agbaime which you can check out the video in my channel we also saw it with Christina Olo assessing after they killed her they did not want her body giving they always want to burn the body because they don't feel the person deserves a befitting burial but you know after they confirmed her that they had killed her they now lit her body on fire. And that was it. That was how Deborah was killed. Eventually, some of these students would make videos gyrating, celebrating, praising Allah, and just basically basking in the fact that they had killed an infidel, like they called them. They had killed someone who had insulted their prophet. And that was just it. Now the video began to circulate around the internet. Many of us began to see it. Pretty much the same day it happened, the video went viral of a girl who was killed in Sokoto 
for blasphemy. There have been a lot of disapproval from a lot of Islamic community. Many people have spoken against the killing, not to justify the fact that she blasphemed because yes, what she did was wrong in the land that she was. She shouldn't have said such a thing. It's important we respect people's religion. It's important we tolerate people's religion. It's important that we respect people's worship. But most likely, maybe Deborah did not or maybe she took it too far. But at the same time, taking laws into your hands is not the best. Many people requested that the killers were caught. And in the video, we saw some of the killers in their face. One particular man holding the matches and telling the world what he had done, bragging as to his role in the killing. And because of that, these pictures were circulating of the killers and people are requesting that they are found and arrested. And on the 13th, it was reported that two of the killers were found and arrested and they were kept in police station. And that now sparked another round of outrage from Muslims or uh, Islamic students who felt that the boys should not have been arrested, that they were doing uh, Allah's work, that they were doing the work for Allah and that they did not deserve to be arrested. Although it was said the protest started peacefully because you could see some banners saying that this is a peaceful protest. However, there are always some people who are always going to be extremists regardless of whether it's peaceful or not. So what was supposed to be a peaceful protest turned out into something really serious. There are accusations that some of these protesters started going to churches. They went to a Catholic church to burn it down. They went to notable Christians and began flogging them. There were videos of another girl even in the process of getting lynched. So it's not clear why all of this were happening but these people really took it overboard. Now it has not been stated if anybody was hurt during this protest but we know that businesses were attacked. Shops were looted and these shops were targeted with you know Igbo owners or Christian owners. So they were basically targeting a specific group of people that had a specific kind of business. They would destroy a business and I mean Deborah wasn't even Catholic nor was she Igbo. So why were these people going after these demographics of people? Why? It's unclear why. So as at the time of making this video, a curfew has been set in Sokoto and it's unclear if these people would even uh, obey the curfew. This seems like these radicals are very out of control and let's hope they obey the curfew. And the police have also stated that one of the killers in the video is not even Nigerian. The one who was with the matches, the one who was the face of everyone, the one we're even thinking that the police would have caught. The police are saying he's from Niger, that this is somebody who illegally came into Nigeria to join in the chaos, that he's not a citizen of the country, he's not even a student of the school. Many of these people who took part in this girl's killing were not even students because I would think the students would be educated enough to know what the laws were. Clearly, they may have reported to the thugs in the community, but a lot of them were basically just community boys who took the laws into their hands. And this is not even the first time. I noticed this same situation when we were talking about the uh, Christian Olu assassin story. Even the same thing with Bridget Agbaime. The people who do the lynching are not the educated ones. These are the thugs who just had nothing to do. In the Olua in case the students went to report to the community people and the jobless people in the community came trooping in the ones who did not care about the law are the ones who always escalate the situation and it's really unfortunate because the police are just finding out although clearly some students would take part in it but majority of the people who take part in this lynching are illiterate for the most part and many of them do not i don't know understand the laws i must say it's really hard to place it it's really hard to put it at the same time also so as at the time of making this video, the young lady Deborah had been buried. She has been laid to rest and it's really sad that this is how it ended for her. I wish there was something that could have been done differently. How I wish she was, you know, removed from the school on time. How I wish that she ran away on time. I feel like there would have been enough time, but I guess that there were students of hers, the girls in the hostel, who were not happy with her. So they most likely would not have let her run away and I'm sure they were the ones who most likely snitched to the angry mob that she was in the security post. Now, the big question is, would she get the justice that she deserves? Would these killers be arrested, tried, and found guilty? Because in the history of this kind of extremist behavior, justice is never really served. Christiane Olu Assassin did not get her justice, despite the fact that her killers were caught and arrested and identified. The killers even confessed to doing it. They still were released and set free. The same thing happened to Bridget Agbaime. The killers confessed, they were arrested, they were identified, they agreed that they did it, but then they were still set free by the lawmakers who were in charge of bringing justice for these victims. 
So will this one be different? Because now they're already telling us that one of the killers is not Nigeria and they can't find him. So I don't believe them though. I believe they can find him. I don't believe he ran all the way from Sokoto back to Niger because that is like another eight to nine hours in vehicle to Kebi State. And from Kebi State, another eight to nine hours to, to Niger. And so I don't think the guy has run away. And even if he has, I think he hasn't gone far. I feel he's still around because it's going to take about half a day, if not 24 hours for him to have to go back to Niger. J Republic. I believe the police can easily track him down if they find him. Them telling us he's not Nije is just them trying to reduce the amount of people to be arrested. They can actually find anyone they want to and I feel that they should. And the two people who are already in their custody is unclear if anyone has been released despite the protest. But with this protest going on, I don't know if these people will actually be put to book. I don't know if Deborah would get the justice that she deserves. This is not the first time we are seeing this. How every time and every time it happens, their yeah, religious leader condemning it the governors or the presidents are always speaking against it and they're always pretending to call for justice and in the end these people are released and sent out of prison they are put back into the world to commit the same crime they are put back into the society to repeat what they had done so do you guys think justice would prevail here do you think that deborah would get the justice that she deserves or do you think she would join the long line of innocent victims awaiting justice for their death caused by extremists i hope she gets justice i hope we talk about it the more and i also hope we as a society can come together and have this conversation the religious conversation is not a very easy topic to have it's not comfortable we are trying not to offend each other but the thing is if we don't have this conversation how do we know what boundaries not to cross how do we know what not to say or how to react a lot of people are now living in fear many people now fear muslims and in my opinion that should not be the case there are a lot of good Muslims out there. I have known a lot of good and Islamic friends who will condemn this act and who don't support it. At the same time, they are not giving uh, Deborah credit for speaking blasphemous words against the Prophet Muhammad. She shouldn't have. It's disrespectful. And if she stays in a place where there is a law against it, she should face the law. The only problem is the law should not have been taken into the hands of the common people. The only problem is the law should not have been taken into the hands of these people. And since they have taken the laws into their hand and they have killed i'm sure that there's a law against killing too and therefore those killers of deborah should also face the law now that they are alive they might as well face the law since she's no longer here to face the law let them face the law and let them be put to book let them be arrested and let them be tried and found guilty hopefully so friends this is a story so far regarding the death of deborah yakubu let me know your thoughts and let me know what you think i know we can keep it respectful try as much as you can not to be insulting and try as much as you can to express yourself without being disrespectful. Let us try and see how we can have this conversation without offending or without insulting and disrespecting each other. It's going to be a sensitive topic. Hopefully, I won't have to block the comment section because I know that these topics can, you know, rattle a lot of people up. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share with your friends and comment your thoughts regarding the tragedy. And if you haven't subscribed yet, this is a good time to click the subscribe button. So whenever there is a new story, you will be the first to know thank you guys for watching and i hope you stay on my channel to check out more videos like this